Alrighty, I'm going to show you a bunch of stuff today about how to set up your own dream room. Uh, whether you want to create the room that you would love to have, or maybe you want to try to recreate your existing room. Um, I want to show you some tips on how to do that. So first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to hit R for our rectangle tool. And I just want you to draw out about the size of like a normal room. You can use the person there to kind of estimate. Obviously, this is probably a little big. It doesn't really matter, to be quite honest, right now. We're just kind of eyeballing this. So once we have the shape of room, by the way, if you don't want to just have a rectangle, sometimes what I like to do is look at it from the top and use my L for line tool. If you wanted to try to like draw out a little, you know, bump out over here, for example, you can, you can customize this so I erase that little line in between. If you want to have, you know, a room that doesn't just, or doesn't look like just a box or something, Feel free to mess with this a little bit if you want to create something a little different, but that's totally up to you. So once you've got a shape for a room, and again, maybe you want to do like a bedroom, maybe you want to do like a dream basement or a dream living room, I don't care, whatever you want to do in design. Uh, once you have a shape layout of a room though, what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit F. F is your offset tool. So what I want you to do then is if you just click once, and again, I'm not holding my mouse button down. You can see that I'm kind of like scaling in and out like this outline of a border around the room. So I'm going to go to my keyboard and I'm just going to type the number six and hit enter. And what you'll see is I just created a six inch wall. So you can type into SketchUp when you're like scaling things out to tell it how much to go. So again, I'll do that one more time. F for offset. I click once to start my shape and I can go to my keyboard and type in six and hitting enter will place a six inch border wall. At this point, what I want to do is I want to use my P for push pull and I want to push this up. I would say, you know, a little over the girl's head, maybe, you know, we're just kind of eyeballing it again. But if the girl is about six feet tall or five and a half feet, I would say a little less than double her height, but something like this, right? Where it's about the size of a normal uh, ceiling. So I don't really care as long as it's not like, you know, obviously a room's not going to be that tall, for instance, right? And it's not going to be like super short like that. So you can eyeball it, but something like this is fine. Now, we've got like a shell of a room here. So let's build a couple of windows. So find a flat wall somewhere where you want to have some windows. Sorry, I had to cut my video there. Um, so, so let's say we want to have our windows along this wall. So what we're going to do is get your camera to a nice view where you can see along the entire wall. And we're going to hit R for rectangle. And I want you to draw a window. Again, it doesn't matter what size. Something like this, maybe. So now I've got this rectangle on the wall. Be careful that your rectangle is not like so close to the wall that you're going to be like, if I were to push it, it would be like in the wall over there. So just something like this. Now, get your camera again if you moved it. Make sure we can see the entire length of the wall. Let me show you a little trick. So M, you know, normally is your move tool. So normally a move tool lets you uh, like move something around like that. But uh, let's do a copy move. So how we do that is we hit M for move. Now we're going to tap control. So the control sign gives me a little plus next to my cursor. So what I want you to try is that lets you drag a copy straight across. Let's put it down towards the end of the wall. Now here's a, a part that we've never done before. Once I place it, Notice my hands are off my keyboard at this part. Uh, I'm going to type in divided by or slash, and then let's say like four, and then I hit enter. Uh, you can do like divided by five or divided by six, divided by three. You can kind of get a different um, layout of your uh, windows here. Put my little thing back on. So again, what I did was I hit M for move. I tapped control. I dragged a copy across. Immediately, I, I, after I drop it, I take my hands off my mouse, I can go to my keyboard, and I can type in slash however many I want in between. So slash, for example, four, and I hit enter, and it should place four evenly spaced windows along that wall. Okay. So next step is we need to push these windows out, or push them in, I should say. So get your camera to where we can see the inside edge of the wall. So something like this, where I can see how far I'm pushing it. So when I hit P for push pull, 
and I start that push-pull process, obviously I don't want to go into the room like this. So when you're push-pulling something, you want to uh, hover your mouse over this inside edge. You'll see uh, that you're, again, I'm, t I'm putting the tip of my little red arrow on the inside wall, and you should see it kind of give you a dot that says on edge. So when I place that down, you see how I now just pushed it right through to the inside edge? Now at this point, SketchUp will remember the last thing you just did. So instead of having to like go through and do this every single time, what I can do is I can just double click those other windows and SketchUp will apply the same push-pull, okay? So if you wanna set up more windows, you can. It's up to you, but at least have a couple windows somewhere. And once you've got your windows drawn, what we're gonna do is we are going to draw some glass on top of it. So I know it seems a little counterproductive, but um, we're gonna draw another rectangle back on top of this. So R for rectangle. Now, I'm trying to draw a rectangle over the top of my window. Sometimes it works like I just did there. If you ever notice that it doesn't work, like, I don't know, sometimes it just doesn't seem to work. Uh, if, you, if your rectangle tool doesn't work, you can also use your L for line. And even if you just draw like a little line along the side of the, the egg shear, it'll fill it in. Okay, so I want you to draw a rectangle over the top of that hole in the wall. Now, at this point, I want to texture this in. So I'm going to hit B. It's my bucket tool, okay? So with my bucket tool, I want to go to this little pull-down menu, and I want to probably take some glass. I'm just going to pick this translucent glass. I like that one the best. And you can see I've now done a, like a little translucent glass window on top. So at this point, you could go and just draw a bunch of more windows and just, uh, you know, paint them in. That's totally fine if you want to do that. You can also do kind of the same thing we did to create the windows. I could select this with my move tool, tap control, and I could slide a copy across to my last spot and then type in divided by four. Again, up to you, however you want to do it. But have some windows somewhere. You should probably also create a door somewhere. So what I would suggest is the same way that we did a window. If you just pop a rectangle onto the wall there. All right, so I just built a, a door frame here, just pushed a rectangle in. Again, same concept. I'm hitting P for push-pull, dragging it into that inner edge. You don't have to make an actual door. If you get bored and want to do that later, that's fine. But for now, I'm just going to leave a big hole in the wall. All right, so now we've got the shape of our room. Uh, what I think the next step will be is texturing. So I'm gonna show you some options, but then I'm gonna show you some other cool things you can do in a sec. So again, hitting B for your bucket, right? You have lots of tools in here, or lots of different texture options. So for example, you might look in like the carpet or fabric or leathers, for example. So maybe you wanna have like a carpet on the ground. That's totally up to you. You can play with a lot of things in here. Some of them are a little bit fancier than others. Um, but I want you to have some kind of actual texture. I think sometimes just using a straight color like that looks a little fake or a little too bright sometimes. Um, so let me show you a little trick. Let's say I want a carpet texture, but I'm not like super thrilled with the, the size or the color. So what you can do is once you've picked, you know, a texture, I can go to the edit tab up here. So there's a color wheel that will pop up. So let's say I don't want gray, but I wanted, I don't know, like some kind of blue. You can pull this little color wheel around and see all these different shades that I can do. So you can do like a red or like a little blue or whatever. Um, and again, you can adjust the shade of it. So if you want like a dark blue or a light blue, you can play with this. The other thing you can do, and again, see how like my little, my little squares here are pretty small. Right here it says the size of my texture. Right now it's set by 10 inches to, by 10 inches um, right here. So let's say I want it to be bigger. Maybe I do 20 inches instead. Obviously my carpet probably gets a little bit too big at that point, but you can play with this number uh, and that will change the size of your shape or your texture as well, okay? So for the end of this video tutorial, and I'll have one more, that's like some extra stuff that you can do. What I want you to do is just try to get textures in uh, the areas that you need them. So obviously, actually let me show you one more thing. Um, let me show you how to get a custom texture. So if I go to Google, let's say I want like, um, I don't know, some kind of wallpaper texture. Or some, actually let's do a paint texture. Painted wall texture. Go to images. 
So let's say I do something just like, I wanted a little bit of like roughness on the wall. I just don't want like a straight color, for instance. So let's say I take something like this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click this image and I'm gonna hit save image as. I'll just save it to my computer. I'll put it in my downloads or something. I'll call it paint, right? So I've saved, actually let's do a different one. That's not gonna save quite right, I don't think. Sometimes you gotta be careful. It's not saving as this like JFIF file. I don't need a JPEG. So I'm gonna call this one paint. All right, so back in SketchUp, what you can do is there's this little box right here that says create a material. So if I click that, this lets me import my own custom textures. So if I click the little uh, folder icon, then you can go and find that picture you saved. So mine's in my downloads. Here it is, paint. I can open it. And then I, I'm just gonna hit okay. So at this point, you can see I've just added this custom texture into SketchUp that I can use to paint in my walls. Now, at this point, let's see. I've I've painted it in, but you can see I've got all these little tiny versions of it. You can see they're called like tiles of it. So I'm gonna have to change that for sure. Uh, so I might need to like play with, get different textures to practice with because this one might not work very well, but I'm gonna change this to like 50 inches instead of 10 or whatever it was set at. You can see it's starting to get a little bit bigger. I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna do like 100 inches because I don't wanna see those like borders around it. Sorry guys, my video kind of froze there. Um, I just wanted to show you at the end there, if you get your texture in and you want to mess with it, um, if it's not quite the right size, remember, you can, sometimes I don't like the color wheel all the way because you get like kind of weird colors, but if you go to some of these other options in here, uh, if you want it to be like pure white, sometimes it's hard to get, but you can pull these little bars around and you can play with it. So all I wanted to say is that sometimes a little bit of texture on the wall, even if it's still white, I think a little bit of texture makes it look a little bit more realistic than just like plain colored walls, which sometimes, again, just they look a little bit too fake, if that makes sense. So where this kind of, even though it might be a little bit too big of like a paint texture or whatever, at least it kind of makes sense. And you can probably find a better picture on Google that's larger that won't come in quite so um, large. But anyway, uh, I'm going to show you some more stuff on how to get objects like, you know, bed or computer or shelves or whatever on the next video. So hopefully you have enough uh, knowledge now to add texture around the entire room to start making it look, you know, like an actual room. All right, we'll finish up in the next video.